dan kesamaan punya And it's a blessed Saturday and we're happy to have you with us today. Sorry na delay ako, I was driving a tractor, okay? Heavy equipment operator na po ang kita nyo, okay? So I truly live on a farm on San Juan Skin, San Juan, San Luis, Pampanga. And the tractor driver came here. Um, nirent po namin sa asosasyon. Asosasyon ng patubig po yun. And Benji and Dr. J are members of this um, cooperative. It's a cooperative. It's an irrigation association. So we borrowed the tractor from them. Rented the tractor actually. And uh, paikot-ikot po kami para ma-flatten yung mga grass. Ano ba ito? Naganda ng pagsasabi. Ma-flatten yung mga grass. It's terrible. Um, ganito na ba ang taglish ngayon? Para mapisa. Mapisa. Oh my gosh. This is for people who don't know anything about farms. Para daanan po yung uh, mga kalahib that happened after the rain. So, I'll be posting that picture later. And makikita niyo po ako na sumagasa po ng anim na papaya. Anim na papaya trees. I ran over six papaya trees. So, today po... Um, Sorry for the short notice. Um, yun nga, hindi ko nga ako, ako nakapag-post because I was ano, um, running over six papaya trees. We will have a session, a Q&A session po called Ask Dr. Anna. I think it's already session four or session five. Ano po? And uh, this is to give way for lots of people who want to ask questions but cannot po um, because uh, sometimes nagmamadali, sometimes may host, nakakahiya naman. So we are opening this session for anyone. It's an ask anything you want to ask um, session. Para po ma-clear up din po yung mga misconceptions and um, questions po na we, nasagap namin during the week which we are sometimes unable to answer individually. So kung meron ho kayong tanong, COVID or non-COVID, um, about pulmonary internal medicine, ang babagong expert na sa mental health. <laughs> sorry, Dr. Dodge. Sorry, Dr. Ryan. And sorry, Dr. Joven. Um, yes, you can put it na down. I'll try my best. Kung hindi po kaya, we'll ask for help. Okay? So, um, siguro I'll ask question muna para mag-start the ball rolling na po tayo. So, pakilala na lang. Our program is called Libring Consulta. I am Dr. Anna York Bondo. My specialty po is pulmonary and ICU. I'm also an internal medicine specialist. And I do a lot of psychology also being... Um, the author of the psychology board exam and a psychology undergrad. So please put your questions below and I will be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, para ho makadagdag din po, no? So ako ho muna magtatanong ng unang question. Um, lots of people are asking me, um, doctora, and I, I often uh, see this question sa mga, mga chat boards po, no? Um, Kailangan pa ko ba ng second swab after being isolated for 14 days? So, lots of people do ask that question. And my answer to them is this. Uh, the DOH po has put out new guidelines na, um, let's say you've been first swabbed, you turned out to be COVID positive. So, of course, magpapa-isolate ka. After 14 days, the question that people often ask me is, Doctora, do we need a second swab? So my answer to this question right now is no, you don't no longer need a second swab um, because studies have shown po that after 10 days, actually internationally, and 14 days, tayo nga ho, sobra, sobra pa 14 days, ano, hindi na po nakakahawa ang mga tao from COVID. So if you have been isolated for 14 days po from the time that you got swabbed and wala na po kayong lagnat, you have the mild form of COVID, it is okay to go back to work. So, pwede na po kayo ma-issuehan ng medical certificate, safe to go back to work. 
or completed 14 days of isolation. That's probably the better term. Pwede na po kayong back to work and you don't have to worry. So, why do people ask for a second swab? Sometimes po requirement po yan ng trabaho. So, if you are the company physician po, tanggalin nyo na yung requirement na hindi na po kailangan. Obviously, if you had major COVID, you went to the ICU, kayo po ay uh, uh, extreme diabetic, dialysis, cancer, very old, you need to see a doctor. Pero more than that po, after 14 days, wag na po kayo matakot, you're more than okay. All right. So there is no need for a second swab. No need for a second swab. Lilinawin ko lang po, no? Dami po kasing naglalagay ng tanong na ganyan sa akin. Um, another question that I'm all, often asked about is, Doktora, bakit pa ho may rapid test? Um, I will not name the municipalities and the companies that are still requiring rapid testing. Siguro po, dapat alam na natin na sagot na ito ngayon, ano? Um, no more, uh, the rapid antibody test has already been disproven po, no? It's not accurate, should not be used to screen po for COVID. The only reason that you might want to do an antibody test po is if you want to donate your antibodies. Ito po ang tinatawag po nating plasma donation. And uh, for some people po, Anna, you would like to donate po yung antibody nyo uh, para po makatulong sa ibang tao, please do that. That's good. And you can do po, one, don't do the rapid antibody. There are more there are better antibody tests po, and that, but again, that's only to be used po for um, donating po your plasma. To be used only po for donating your plasma, okay? Not for anything else. And uh, another question that I keep receiving, Doctora, um, naging malaking issue po ito, uh, is there a prophylaxis for COVID? And I think this was um, started po by a group called Flatten the Fear. And they held a news conference po with former DOH Secretary Jaime Galvestan. And one of their messages po is that if you don't want to have COVID po, you can take uh, hydroxychloroquine. And uh, pwede na umikot na walang mask. Okay, I wanted to set this really, really clear. And na post ko rin po si Archbishop Arguelles who said na no need to wear a mask and it's okay to just pray. Um, number one po, yung hydroxychloroquine, it's not proven. In fact, there have been studies po that said na hydroxychloroquine is actually, um, there have been studies abroad and internationally na hindi na ho siya talaga dapat gamitin. Okay? So, until we find a new study na nagsasabing safe at dapat gamitin, I think we just have to go with the scientific knowledge that we have now that it's not safe and it should not be used. Okay? What's the meaning of prophylaxis? Maraming, tina, tinanong din po sa akin ni Mr. John Susi of Brigada Pampanga. The meaning po of prophylaxis means na, what's prophylaxis? Parang iinom ka ng gamot para hindi po mangyayari yung sakit na yon sa inyo. This is often used in malaria. Um, people take uh, malaria prophylaxis before they go to a malaria-prone area. Um, but this has not been proven po in COVID. It hasn't been proven in SARS. So please, ano, don't, don't take um, any gamots and then stop wearing your mask, okay? Continue po to wear a mask and the face shield. Kasi yun po talaga yung may data. Okay? Yun po talaga yung may data. And as scientists po, we only have to follow the evidence. Hindi naman po pwedeng... Uh, ma we have to... We have to prove something po eh, or at least the best possible evidence that we have. So the best possible evidence that we have is to use at least mask po and a face shield. And please, ito pong mga prophylaxis na to hanggang proven po sila by the FDA and by the government, um, wag po natin gamitin kasi po baka makasama. And uh, later on na lang po tayo magre-regret. People often ask me also, question number four generated by me. And then I will start to ask answer questions. What happened to the Sabunan antiviral? Have you heard that question before? Are you familiar with this question? Narinig niyo ba yung Sabunan antiviral? Um, ako po... Um, Siguro po mahina yung mic ni Ma'am Ray na she cannot hear us, ano? But the Fabunan antiviral po or any antiviral, hindi po siya proven by the FDA. So unless po proven by the FDA, I cannot recommend it to persons po. Kasi po baka may mangyari sa inyo and uh, mahirap na pong uminom ng hindi po napag-aralan ng mabuti. Okay? So let's go. Let's ask any questions that we might have. 
Um, Miss Reina, any questions? Um, wala pa pong dumadating, Doctora, pero we can start greeting more uh, our so, guests. Sumati muna tayo, oo, para we'll gather questions. From Ralph, how are you, Ralph? Kumusta ka? Miss Nancy, thanks for joining us. Mr. Kenneth, hello, hello also. Uh, Nancy, good morning, good morning, Nancy. From Dodge, I Sir Dodge, kumusta? Um, guys, um, one of the best urologists in the Philippines. Kapit bahay ko po from Candaba, Pampanga. Ang ganda po ng discussion niya regarding um benign prostatic hyper hyperplasia. Tinatawag po nating BPH. There's no translation po sa English, but the tra uh, sa Tagalog. But uh, the, the question is, bakit po hirap umihi si tatay? So that was a, a very great discussion by Dr. Dodge. Talagang sorry, inabuso po natin yung knowledge si Dr. Dodge. Finally, the last question he had to answer was, what's Viagra and what is the mechanism of action of Viagra? Talagang grabe, no? But hey... For those who want to know, Viagra po is, yes, an accepted treatment po for benign prostatic hyperplasia. It's a uro urologic drug and it's something that we need to know. Para po, uh, if ever you know anyone who's drinking it or nag-iisip ka, at least you know the good and the bad. Kasi po, meron na pong na-attack dito. But there are also good points. Nakakatulong din po sa benign prostatic hyperplasia. And for people po with diabetes-induced vasculopathy. So, on Tuesday, Dr. Dodge is joining us po again for a bato sa bato. Not, not Senator Bato, okay? Bato sa bato. Kidney stones, okay? Not kidney stones. Very good and uh, ano po, and uh, talagang timely topic. Again, um, I'd like to um, invite everyone nga pala. Uh, today is um, the Libreng Consulta po of the Philippine Urologic Association. Hindi pa huli. Please um, register if you want to be um, seen by Dr. Joben, Dr. Dodge, Dr. Ryan, and Dr. J.B. Prodigalidad, my classmate, to help me. Um, please, the uh, group is... Ta uh, um, the group po is the Philippine Urologic Association, PUA. And uh, the Facebook group that you can register in is Tayo Naman. Tayo Naman. Okay? It is um, free telemedicine consultation po na mga lolo, kuya, tatay, and anyone who with kidney stone doesn't have to be a guy. Kidney stone po, kidney transplant. Ito po yung pag-uusapan. Kidney stone, kidney transplant, um, prostatic problems, prostatitis, hindi makaihe, ihi ng ihe. Iyon po yun. If you have any problems, Dr. Judge Limhoko, um, tayo naman, Dr. Ryan Cablitas, Dr. Joben Abraham, Dr. JV Prodigalidad, my classmate po, um, Dr. Richie Yusai, they are all there. Okay? So, libreng konsulta na po. That's today. Today po. That's September 26. So, join them po September 26. Okay. From Resty, good morning, Resty. From Patricia, magandang umaga po. From Miss Loris, hello. Joseph, good afternoon. Ay, good morning. Opo. Abner, ano po ang requirements kung pupunta outside Luzon? Magandang tanong yan. Sir Abner, actually, first of all, if you want to go outside Luzon, I hope it's for business kasi talagang ako rin gusto, gusto ko humagbakasyon sa Boracay. I just posted a picture of Boracay. Pero parang mahirap. Ano po? Um, first of all, if you are in business, the, there's something called the working pass. Pwede nyo pong kunin po yon sa munisipyo. Uh, kung nagtratransport po kayo ng inyong fruits, vegetables, rice, um, fish, um, meron po tinatawag pong working pass. And you can get that from the munisipyo and the police station. If you are going on vacation, parang wala, or visiting your parents, kailangan pa ba? Let me yell at Dr. J. Dr. J, kailangan pa ba if you're visiting your parents? Travel pass. Yan po. If uh, Mr. Abner, you're visiting your parents, you're visiting your girlfriend, you're going home, travel pass po ang kailangan nyo. You get that also po from the barangay. Opo. Travel pass. So, dalaw po yan, no? There's a working pass and there's a travel pass. So... Yung iba't iba po rin, unfortunately, I can't answer that kasi I keep getting complaints on my FB. 
Oh, oh different LGUs po. And, and, and this is really bad for business. Ano po? Si dami ho nagko-complain sa akin mga truckers. Doktora, bakit ho from Cavite to ano to Ilocos, nagladala ho kami ng ano vegetables, cooking oil, beer, whatever, um gas, um gasoline, uh, tanker, ganun. Iba-iba daw yung mga checkpoints at iba't iba daw ang hinahanap. Unfortunately, that's one of the big problems po sa Pilipinas ngayon, which is called rationalization or sana isa-isa na lang po or isa na lang yung mga requirements kasi paano mo naman alam lahat along the way ano for example po you're going to go from Laguna then you're going to pass Metro Manila then you're gonna pass Bulacan for example you're going po to Isabela no then you're gonna pass Bulacan then you're gonna pass Pampanga then you're gonna go on the SC Tech then you're going to exit po sa Nueva Ecija after that po Nueva Vizcaya and then finally you get to Isabela so, lahat po yun may sarili-sariling requirements and it's just really very difficult. So, IATF, if you are listening, that's one of the things po that we need to fix. So, Sir Abner, I cannot answer that question. So, meron ho magre-require ng mga rapid test pa. I'm sorry to tell you na some LGUs are still doing that. Okay. Ay, ano, sabi po ni Dr. J, if you plan to travel anywhere, better to ask po muna sa bawat LGU kasi po um oh uh, yung destination nyo kasi we cannot from here tell you kasi bawat bayan may sarili-sariling ano rules and that's actually bad for business thank you for that question actually kasi napakagandang tanong po yon and napakamahalaga po for people doing business and for people traveling po on a personal basis uh, another good question uh, sabi po ni Mayor J Sinong pagtatanungan po dun sa lugar na yon? A good person to ask would be the Barangay Council. Opo. The Barangay Council. And actually, sa mga nagtatanong po, no, um, I was just talking to my two classmates po who are both doctors in Bacolod po and Iloilo City. Um, nalagay lang ho sa modified ECQ ang Bacolod and nalagay lang ho na modified ECQ si Iloilo. And one of the things that they mentioned was the LSI or locally stranded individuals that are coming. So, sa bawat LGU po, iba na ngayon ang patakaran sa Iloilo and Bacolod based on the MECQ po compared to others around. So, you really have to ask po before you ano, before you go. Sa mga nag-tracking, ang hirap po talaga. I, I think you know my, what I'm trying to say. Okay, mahirap. Okay? Excellent question. Hindi lang good question. Excellent question. From Barbie, good morning. Thanks, Barbie. Um, Ralph, magandang umaga. Yana, good morning. Jo Jubilin, good morning. Um, nawala yung top fan badge ko. Ralph, comment ka pala ulit. Bibigyan ka tayong top fan badge, okay? Um, Corana, good morning. Yun na nga ng pangalan ni Corana, Corana Virus. <laughs> Loris from Santa Cruz, Manila. Good morning. Um, Corana, I like your ano, <laughs> FB name. Okay siya. Jubilin, need ko po ng neurologist. What's happening, Jubilin? If you want to share, we're here. Okay, I, I can refer you to a neurologist or give you some thoughts. Yola, good afternoon. Yols, kumusta? Floresca, good morning. Good morning din, ma'am. Josephine, magandang umaga po. Um, Ralph, thank you. Uh, thank you also, Ralph. Ayan. From Jerry, good morning. Good morning, Jerry. From Mr. Abner, magandang umaga po. That's all, Doctora, for today. Okay. Um, let me ask. Um, somebody asked me, am I a member of Flatten the Fear? which is um, one of the organizations supposedly for prophylaxis. And um, tinanong din po sa akin ito ng Brigada Pampanga this, um, siguro two days ago. Um, what I could advise persons, you know, and dami pong nagsa-circulate na balita sa internet. Half of which, or maybe even more than half of it is considered fake news or false news. How do you know? Number one, you know, and I see a lot of this, okay, uh, may mga, ano, daming followers pa, no? Um, one of the things that you should ask is, 
sino po itong organization na to? Flatten the fear. Okay? Or wag na natin patulan si Flatten the Fear. Another, any other organization. Um, one of the things na napat nakalagay po sa about is kung sino po sila. Who is the company, person, address, educational attainment po ng bawat pong um, organization na nakapost po sa Facebook. Unfortunately, marami po talagang nagkukubli. Okay? Ngayon, kung wala pong name, address, phone number, huwag nyo na hong basahin. It's useless. Okay? Because pag hindi po nila ilalagay yung pangalan nila, how do we know po yung kanilang, ano po eh, yung kanilang, how do we know yung accuracy po ng kanilang sinasabi? Kasi anybody can just say anything. I don't care kung doktor sila. Okay? Lagay nila yung pangalan nila, yung clinic address, yung ano po nila, anong natapos. Number two issue that you have to be very careful about is pharmaceutical companies. Okay? Um, there, there's nothing wrong, okay? Ang dami pong pharmaceutical companies ngayon, nagtatayo po ng mga community, ganun po, Facebook groups, ganun. The most important po, and I already messaged a lot of them, identify yourself that you are a pharmaceutical company. Hindi po pwede talaga na, for example, you have a big Facebook group, yung pala, you're selling something, sana sabihin nyo na lang po talaga. Wala naman pong masama to have a, an information campaign as a pharmaceutical company. But you are required po by ethical law uh, na ilagay po kung sino po kayo, who are you, what are you selling, at kung ano po yung purpose ng inyong grupo. Marami po kasing sumasali sa mga grupo. Next thing you know, ayan. And that happened po to Dr. Jaime Galvestan. I have the deepest respect po for Dr. Galvestan, former DOH secretary. Pero because he just joined this group po at nakipagmerienda pa, and I think he did a welcome address, nasama po yung pangalan niya doon. And he had to personally issue po a, ano, an announcement on his Facebook page po that he was not part of that group. So if so it's be, be careful po talaga kasi what you follow, be careful po what you listen to and make sure that they are credible media outlets. Kasi po, marami po talagang nag, mamarunong marunungan, yung pala they're either selling something or iba na po ang kanilang pinag-iisipan. Okay? So um, that was, um, that, that's my advice for the fake news po. Try to find out who made the news and what they are trying to say. And after that po, maliliwanagan po tayo ng malaki. Okay? Any other questions? We're happy to answer them now. Dami pong naglalagay ng questions dun sa, per, dun sa, ano eh, dun sa messenger. We are not, uh, uh, people ask me, Doktora, why are you not allowed to answer on social media? Well, first of all, there's ko, what we call po data privacy. Hindi naman po pwede ibulat-lat lang po namin yung problema nyo dito. Ang dami pong nanunood, okay? That's not proper. And number two, even if you messenger me po, um, we are also not allowed unless we establish po a doctor-patient relationship. So, hindi po namin masasagot talaga yung tanong nyo. For example, you send a lab result. Kasi po, um, before we can answer something na talagang personal sa sa'yo, I can only give you general advice. But yung personal nyo po, talaga na yun, nasusundin nyo po, um, matagal pong proseso yan. First of all, um, you need to register yourself, name, address, phone. Kasi ho, kung nawala kayo, like say, it's emergency, no? Doktora, masakit po yung, yung dibdib ko. Then, na, naputol po. That's a heart attack in the making. So, I need to be able to contact you. So, number one yun, ano? Number two po is, I need to know your history. Matagal yan. Kailan nag-umpisa? Anong nangyari? Saan nangyari? Ano pong ginawa nyo? Anong ininom yung gamot? Um, how long na po nangyari to? And then, after that po, pupuntahan natin. Uh, kayo po nilalagnat. Um, ang haba po. It's really, really long. And then, after that, aalamin po namin yung family history nyo. Yung nanay nyo, ano kinamatay? Yung tatay nyo, ano kinamatay? Yung kapatid nyo, buhay pa ba? May cancer po sa pamilya, diabetes, hypertension, stone, ang haba po ng personal history, okay? That's family history. And then, personal history pa, ikaw mismo. Um, if the problem is OB, ilang beses kang nanganak, eh, sorry, ilang beses kang nabuntis, followed by ilang beses kang nanganak. Followed by na ilang beses kang nakunan. Followed by ilang beses ang naging live birth mo. And then, ang haba po nun, that's your that's your OB score. Ang haba, okay? For for ano naman, sa mga bata, napanganak ka bang full term? Uh, ikailan ka sa birth order? Uh, paano ka na-deliver? Lahat po ang haba nun, okay? Ikaw naman, if you're the adult, na-opera ka na ba? 
uh, anong mga sakit mo. So, isa-isay natin lahat yan. Ano? Lahat po ng gamot na iniinom nyo. Um, lahat po ng operasyon na nangyari sa inyo. Every single thing that you're allergic to po. Okay? Do you smoke? Do you drink? Are you sexually active? If you are sexually active, who is your partner? Male, female, LGBT? Hindi naman ho sa nakike alam but I need to know those questions. Okay? Um, balikan natin si OB. Kailan ho kayo uh, dinatnan? What age? How often? Ilang araw? Meron pang ilang napkin eh. Okay? So, it's not, ano, it's, it's very extensive. Okay? So, and then after that po, for those, ano, where do you live? Do you live in a farm? Do you live in the city? Um, have you traveled? Um, kayo po ba ay may dogs, cats, um, birds? Meron pang turtles eh. And then um, furry animals. So lahat po yun. Have you been treated for any mental illness? Kailangan sagutin nyo rin po yun. And then lahat po ng inyong iniinom including all supplements. So Reyna, that, that whole thing takes 45 minutes. Okay? Bago... <laughs> And then, the, wag na pa natin sabihin yung physical exam. So, hindi po biro talaga yung trabaho ng doktor. Okay? So, pag i-message, ano ho yung dapat kong gawin with one second, I cannot answer that. And number two is, I should not answer that kasi po masama po yun for you and for me. Okay? So, before anybody can really give you po a complete answer, kailangan po masagot niya lahat ng tinunong kong yun. And that's the only time that that person should be giving a professional opinion about another person. Okay? So, ang trabaho po ng doktor is not to answer one single question on the internet. Like, Dok, ano pong gagawin ko? Ito yung nangyari. Hindi po. Uung katin po yun to the max. Para kang ang NBI invest. You know, somebody told me, doktora, para kang NBI invest, investigator ng NBI. Because sometimes, things that you don't think are important are actually very important for a doctor. And um, one of the, the things that they actually teach in medical school is how to gain the trust of the person para po maganda po yung sharing nyo. Kasi po, pag nahihiya yung taong sabihin, dalawa po yung asawa ko, apat po yung asawa ko, I'm not having sex, I'm having a problem with this. Kung hindi po kayo magkakaintindihan and there is no trust, you are going to get the wrong diagnosis and you're wasting everybody's time. At baka ako makasama pa ako sa inyo yun. So, the internet is really the best way to get fast opinions. But these opinions are not personal to you po. They are in general. And they are usually very good advice, especially coming from um, yung talaga pong doktor. Hindi po yung uh, ibang klaseng doktor, okay? But again, may leads din po talaga. And people should not attempt to, to, to establish a doctor-patient relationship on social media without an extensive history and physical examination. Yun lang po. Nag-gets mo ba yun, Reyna? Until oh, then, right? Ay, yeah. Kasi oh, ano talaga, there are lots yeah. of factors involved in ano eh, in investigating a case. Hindi siya pwedeng, kasi magkakaiba talaga yung experience natin, magkakaiba tayong, we're, we're an individual, kumbaga talagang uniquely, unique yung ano natin, unique yung needs, unique yung ginawa natin with each other. So, lahat yun kinoconsider ng doctor. Totoo yes. yun. Yun. Yes, excuse me, ayusin ko lang po yung ilaw ko. So basically, I'm sorry to go near the camera, but basically, ganun ho talaga. Um, that's why sometimes um, people say, why can't you answer on social media? Number one, we're not allowed by the PRC. Okay? And number two po, talagang incomplete po talaga yung information na binibigay sa amin. Opo. Yeah. For a true telemedicine to occur, Lahat po yun, dapat tinanong ng doktor, okay? Ngayon, pag hindi po kayo tinanong ng maiging maigi, eh, minadali lang po kayo, okay? Minadali lang po kayo. By the time I finish with the history and PE, ah, lahat, ng, lahat ng balitang pinagdaanan ng tatay mo, nanay mo, kapatid mo, mga anak mo, asawa mo, at ikaw alam ko. And that's what enables me to make a proper diagnosis. And that's also what enables me to choose kung ano yung ano eh, dapat na, na, na gamutan para sa iyo. Kasi this is not a one size fits all. Um, there are many correct answers. Ang importante talaga 
eh, tanggap mo yung nangyari at tanggap mo, there has to be a, ano eh, what we call a, ano eh, it's, it's called a healing environment and a mutual trust between each other. And if we don't achieve that, it's not gonna happen. And very good doctors can achieve that even on the internet. Okay? Nasa sa ano, pagtatanong po yun and pa, pag, how, how, we, how we interact with each other po. Um, it can happen po even on a Viber or on a phone call. But um, ano po, um, with long-term patients, I just talk to them. My doctor, lumakas na ako, narinig ko lang kung boses niyo. Maraming ganon. Um, but again, before somebody can really give you a proper answer, kailangan po maganda ko talaga yung investigasyon kung ano po ang nangyari. Okay? So, wag pong masama loob. People, sometimes I answer people, I can't answer on social media. Kasi po, mali po talaga yun. Okay? And anyone who attempts to do that, that's not proper medicine din po. Okay? Proper medicine is through a telemedicine. It should be private. It should be complete. It should be discreet. It should be compassionate. It should be based on science. Ayun lang po. Okay? Agree. Okay, Doctor. May mga humabol pong mga Ayan. So again, if I answer your question, it's in a general manner. Okay? Hindi po talaga na yan just because I said it. Kasi ang dami hong nangyari sa inyo na hindi ko alam. And usually, even one hour, kulang pa yon. I have seen people for two hours. That's just normal. Okay? Oh, sige, Rain. So, from Jerry. Thank you, Doctora, sa shout out. Thanks, Jerry. Where are you ba? From Ms. Jesusa Basilico, Basilio Basco. Good morning, Mayor J. Thanks palagi sa oras na binibigay niyo. Education is important po during this COVID crisis. Education from ano po, valid do sources and valid doctors and valid LGU officials. Ang dami ho kasing nag fb live, di naman natin alam kung tama yung sinasabi nila o hindi. And the most important, marami ho nag fb live, tinatago nila kung sino sila. That's not good. From Miss Lorna. Hi, Lorna. Kumusta? From a uh, Cap Silvina Lazara. Good morning. Sana makarating po sa inyo ang message ko. Yes, nakarating, ma'am. Juvelin, tama po, doktora. Maging confidential, lalo na po sa medical issues ang pinag-uusapan. Thank you and very responsive po kayo. Yes, ma'am, Juvelin. Personal po yan sa tao. Hindi po dapat pinagkakakalat po yan. Um, there's a Data Privacy Act. From Kim Sagum, ha, 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 ha. Pinagtatawanan mo ba yung tita mo, Kim, na naging ano, heavy equipment operator? Ako rin natawa. <laughs> okay. From um, Doris, good morning, Doris. How are you? Um, from Charlie, um, good morning, Sir Charlie. Good morning po. Uh, good morning, Ma'am Doris. Kumusta? Kababayan ko ata si Ma'am Doris. Um, Nag-high blood po ako due to hormonal imbalance. Ngayon, tigil na po ang mens ko. Dapat po po bang i-continue ang condesartan kahit na po hindi na nag-high blood? Napakagandang tanong. Which people always ask. And ano ah, don't think... People ask this in Metro Manila, in the province, everywhere. Okay. The, the basic question is, I'm taking high blood medicine. Ngayon po, okay na po yung BP ko. So, pwede na ba akong tumigil ng aking gamutan? Et, eto lang yung ano eh. The question is, ano ang nangyari sa'yo? Eto, there are many ways to answer this question, ma'am eh. Eto ah. Eto po ah. The question, the answer is really, ano ang nangyari sa'yo from the time that you started the medicine? Okay? Kasi, Two scenarios ang sasabihin ko sa iyo, okay? There are people po who have high blood. Talagang basic high blood, usually genetic, okay? And these are people na ano po, payat na po sila, they watch their diet, they exercise every day. Um, they meditate pa, nag-yoga pa, so wala na silang stress sa buhay nila. So basically, ginawa na ho nila dapat lahat ng what we call po non-medical interventions or lifestyle interventions. They also eat only vegetables, tofu, and fruits. Okay? Ni isang red meat at saka ni isang baboy wala. Okay? But their BP is still one, one, sabihin na natin, 150 over 90. So, sinart po natin ng gamot. So, naging 130 over 80 na po ito mga taon to after two months. 
So, babalik siya sa akin, doktora, 130 over 80 na po ako or 130 over 70. Um, should I stop taking high blood medicine? My answer to that person po is no. And I, I am very sad to inform her na more likely po, and because, for example, yung daddy niya high blood at the age of 40, mommy niya high blood at the age of 35, lahat ng kapatid niya high blood, I have to tell her more likely po that is a genetic reason and that you will have to continue this medicine for life. Okay? Masakit hong sabihin, but more likely po lifetime talaga yung gamot niya. Kasi wala na hong aayusin, payat na po yung tao and talagang yung, yung disiplina po niya nandun. Okay? On the other hand, there's another patient. For example po, 55 years old, executive po, uh, overweight ng 50 pounds, okay? Uh, kumakain ho ng taba ng baboy and leche flan twice a week, okay? Naninigarilyo pa po. And then after that po, came to me um, with the BP. And, and also super stressed sa trabaho niya, okay? Siyempre pandemic. Okay. So, yung BP niya po, 160. Sabihin na natin, 160 over 90. So, hindi ko na ho siya pwedeng hintayin na bumaba pa yung BP niya. Kasi, for example, 160 over 90, na hero na po yung tao, okay? That person needs to have the BP brought down fast. So, sinart ko na po ng gamot. Okay. Meanwhile, in the in the six months po na nag-start siya ng gamot, he lost all the excess weight. Nag-exercise na po si daddy. Tumigil po ng kapapanigarilyo. Hindi na rin ho uminom. Wala nang kinain na taba ng baboy. No more leche flan. Okay? And then, the BP became like 120 over 80. So, tinatanong ko ngayon na sa akin ni daddy, I mean, what am I going to do about this medicine? Pwede na bang magbago, mag-stop? Ang ano ko po doon is, it's possible to stop, pero we're not going to stop immediately. Kailangan po, babaan ng babaan po yung, ano, yung dosaging ni daddy until makita po natin kung kaya niya ng wala o hindi. Ngayon, pag tala halimbawa po, mababa na yung ano, then umaakit na naman sa 140, 150, that person needs to stay on medication na rin. But, um, kung na nakayanan po niya ng 120 over 80 pa rin ho, um, na, na titrate, the word is titrating, pababa ng pababa po. Um, pababa ng pababa yung dose na kayanan po ni daddy na 0.5 na lang or one half tablet na lang, mag-try po tayo na itigil po yun, it's possible. So, yun po yung ano, masasabi ko, no? If it is the medication that is maintaining your blood pressure, for life na po yun. If, however, napansin nyo po, you don't need so much medication na nahihilo na po kayo because you lost 50 pounds at wala na kayong high blood, then, Subukan po natin ibaba si gamot until the point of zero. Okay? But again, kung naging zero po kayo sa gamot nyo because you lost 50 pounds, the moment you gain those 50 pounds, guess mo kung saan tayo. Nasa butika na naman. Okay? So there are some people po na nalalabanan po nila yung high blood nila through the lifestyle change. Pero again, that lifestyle change naman po, has to be maintained habang buhay naman. Kahit hindi siya magagamot habang buhay, magbabagong buhay naman po siya talaga. Okay? So, I hope you got the the the, the scenario. So, tingnan niyo po, um, kung talaga hong um, namayat naman ho kayo and so many things change in your life, you might try it with the advice of a doctor to bring down your BP medicine. On the other hand, kung kayo na talaga ang pinakapayat na tao sa buong mundo at hindi ho kayo kumakain ng isang katiting po ng asin, salt, then you will need that medication for life. Okay? Nakuha mo yun, Reyna? Did you get that? Yes. That's that's why it's very important malaman talaga yung mga yes, asin. Yes, that's why. Yeah, I can't answer that question sa mga tao. Eh. Kasi like, di ba, saan ka? Are you patient A or are you patient B? And most people are actually between A and B. Wala yeah. naman talagang ganong kalinaw na, na sila yun eh. So, na, 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 yun. I can't answer your question talaga na, ano, without knowing your full background. Okay? Pero and, I just gave the general, uh, the general picture on how I would stop a blood pressure medication on a certain patient. Okay? That's true. That's true, Doktora. Yun. So, balik po tayo. Okay. From Marliza, good afternoon. Ayan, kate 12 lang. Ayan. Sheena, good afternoon. Iha. 
from Mr. Maynardo, pag nasa second opinion, dapat may referral yung dati mong doktor. Unethical pag pinakailaman ng pasyente na hindi mo pinaalam dati kung, kung sa center lang pa check up. No sir, I do not agree with that statement. Um, karapatan po ng pasyente to have, what is a second opinion? Sige po, ba, ano, um, at hindi naman ako galit kay sir, I explain ko lang yung side ko. And thank you for that question. What is a second opinion? A second opinion po is finding another doctor to tell you, gusto mong malaman kung okay yung sinabi nung una. And it's called a second opinion. Wala pong masama doon. Hindi lang doktor. Mas gusto ko nga ho, kung, lalo na kung complicated yung case, wala naman hong masama to get another person to help. Uh, but there are some doctors po na sensitibo. Bakit di ka ba naniniwala sa akin? Ganun, ganun. Hindi ho dapat ganun na no, no, no. Um, karapatan po ng pasyente to get another a doctor or opinion po at pumili po sa inyong dalawa. So dapat open kayo doon bilang doktor. So, do, uh, sir, i, pwede nyo naman ipaalam if you're going to get a second opinion. Pwede rin namang hindi dahil karapatan po nyo yun. And, um, masama bang pakialaman yung ano, uh, ginagawa ng ibang doktor? Hindi po. Lalo na ho kung nakakasama yung ginagawa ng unang doktor. So, there are cases like that the good doctor is not perfect. And sometimes may bago kung lumabas na hindi po alam ni doctor number one, na alam po ni doctor number two. So, it is your, um, karapatan niyo po yun bilang pasyente na humanap po ng ibang doktora na mas naayon po sa inyo. I often tell this to patients, okay? Sometimes people ask me, doktora, lilipat na lang kami dito or whatever. Um, and people who have also left my practice, okay? People, some, kailangan mag-break muna tayo sa isa't isa, okay? That happens also in business. Ito po sasabihin ko, ah, finding the right doctor for you is like finding a boyfriend or like finding a husband or a wife. And maybe even harder than finding a husband or a wife. Kasi po, um, what do I mean by that, Rina? It's like a boyfriend. Sometimes, you know, the person is nice, guwapo naman, di naman ano, may, may trabaho, but hindi kayo swak. You are not meant for each other. That doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that si boyfriend is a, oh, is a bad person. Hindi lang kayo dapat, okay? That happens also with doctors. Iba't iba po ang personalidad, lalo na po yung long term like diabetes, kidney disease, um, ano pa po, diabetes, kidney disease, cancer is also something na kailangan yung personality nyo nagsaswak. Kasi po, um, pag hindi mo kagbagdang yung doktor mo, you're not gonna get better. So, there are patients that I've said, ma'am, baka maybe I'm not the right person for you. And there are patients naman who said, doktora, you're such a nice person that maybe you're not the right person for us. And that happens, okay? So, just like having a boyfriend or a girlfriend, break up and move on. Huwag lang ho at sana manira sa isa't isa. Okay? O ikaw, Reyna, what do you think? Well, sa akin, for me, it's acceptable, doktora. Especially yeah, with my kids. Yung pedia namin talaga hinanap talaga namin yun. Yeah. Based on our comfortability level, yeah. based on the knowledge of the doctor, based dun sa rapport namin with each other, kasi gusto ko yung doctor ko naka, nakakakwentuhan ko. And anytime, oh. kasi yung text sa kanya. So that's one of the things that we considered yon. True. So, um, there's a lot of reasons to choose a doctor. Of course, naman kailangan may basic knowledge, no? Kasi hindi naman pwedeng wala. Pero after that po, personality. After that po, your personality and their personality. And then uh, uh, also where they are located. Sumasagot ba sila ng text? Nagbibigay ba sila ng cellphone? Magkano ho ba singil nila? Lahat po yun. Mag, uh, um, kailangan swak kayo. Okay? I even ha we even have a pedia na gustong gusto talaga namin but because of the schedule and yung 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 location hindi talaga pero we really love that that pedia talaga kaso yun nga yeah. yung schedule de ba wala talaga ganun talaga ganun talaga. Yeah. ganun talaga ganun talaga and also eto lang ah don't be afraid to change doctor like don't be afraid to dump your boyfriend if it's not right for you you find somebody else 
From Jerry Nabotas. Ay, from Nabotas pala kayo, sir. Jocelyn, good afternoon from Pangasinan. Thanks, ma'am. I'm from Arlene, good afternoon. Kung masakit ba ang raspa? Ma'am, ang tao, raspa po is called DNC, dilatation and curettage. It's usually done po by an OB. Reasons, some of the more common reasons is um, miscarriage. Yung iba naman po, biopsy. Yung iba, polyps. So there's a lot of reasons po for a DNC or what we call po in Tagalog or popularly called rinaraspa. Well, ano ho, gumagamit naman ho sila ng anesthesia. So you will supposedly, you are not supposed to feel anything po pag kayo po ay nagkaroon ng DNC or naraspa. You are not supposed to feel anything. Some people feel some, ano po, some uh, complications from the from the from the anesthesia pero ngayon ho mga modern na po yung mga anesthesia ngayon dati ho nasusuka pa yung mga tao pero ngayon po iba na so it just takes minutes and it's relatively painless especially with the proper anesthesia okay done po by uh, an OB gynae from uh, siya sa hello doc ay from makabebe kamaga ano may kababayan how are you Vanessa Gabja, good afternoon from Makabebe. Wow, I, yeah, I get a lot of people from Makabebe also. Yung mga, ay ito, si Sir Maynardo, yung mga nagpa-CBC check-up sa temperature frontline soldier na may alam pong gamot, military nurses, pero the experts sa diagnosis tulad na experienced doctors. You know what about the military nurses and doctors? Sa akin ha, I respect people from Viluna. And some of them are even better at trauma po than regular. Kasi syempre, uh, in fact, the VILU na po, they held the seminar po on trauma eh. Kasi po sila po yung nasa, ano eh, nasa, nasa Zamboanga during the, matindi po yung trauma ang nangyari. So, I would say po that they have experience naman po, but maybe iba lang po yung experience nila. And ito naman yung COVID, wala naman yung may experience bago to eh. Okay? We are all just gaining experience from COVID. So with regards to the military nurses and doctors, ako po may respeto sa kanila. I've seen V. Luna. I've seen itong, um, the one na ano ho, um, the hospital po where, ano, um, there's a military hospital po sa QC. The name is just escaping me po. But I would, I would say po that I have the greatest respect for military doctors and nurses. Okay? So yun lang po. Actually, my mom wanted me to be a reserve doctor. Nag-apply nga ako, hindi ko na lang huna pursue eh. But at this point, I'm too old, okay? <laughs> Sorry. From Floresca, tama po, doktor. Mas gusto po tulad din yung doktor na matanong. Kasi po, maayos ang diagnosis ng doktor. Ay hindi po santabi yung ibang doktor. Kasi po, yung hindi po makausap ng maayos, yung mukhang masungit, hehe, just saying. Sana po lahat ng doktor, eh tulad nyo, salamat po. Mom, you know what? Doctors, I, I thank you for those kind words. But again, doctors are people also. Hindi naman po siguro sila masungit. Um, maybe they just had a bad day. And uh, kami tao lang tayo, di ba? Um, of course, kung talaga kung ano, um, likas silang masungit, well, ganun talaga. I'll just tell you a story po. Um, I work in the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, which is the number one cancer center po sa buong mundo. And the top surgeon there was named Dr. Robert Gins. Uh, yeah, Dr. Robert Ginsburg, kung hindi po ako nagkakamali. And he was really, he trained some of the top thoracic surgeons in the entire world. And he has disciples, may mga disipulo po po hanggang ngayon. And ano lang talaga, he was so brilliant po na sometimes he did not have the best bedside manner. Very, very, may pagkabrusko po si sir, okay? And sometimes he'll really tell you straight out. And he is my mentor. I respect him so much po. Tak, naiyak ako. Um, kuminsan po medyo brusko siya talagang magsalita sa mga pasyente. But yung qualities po niya as a surgeon and as a teacher, hindi po talaga na what I must say, okay? So one time, parang... Masyado sa ata, actually, brusko. May nasabihan po siyang matanda na eh. Um, kano po. Parang sinabi niya actually talaga sa kanya, you need major surgery para dyan sa lung cancer niyo or mamamatay kayo. Talaga sinabihan po ng ganon. I was personally shocked. The husband of the patient, and then walk out si sir, the husband was personally shocked. 
it was a guy after the patient. Everyone was shocked that in the room. We were left speechless. Pero sabi ko, I'm so sorry. You know, ganun talaga si Doc, ganyan, ganyan. You know what the, kung sinong sumalo, Reina? Not the relatives, the patient. You know what sabi niya, doctor? Sabi niya, you are very young. I was left, when I was 31, sabi niya, um, I traveled for a long way from my home to see, eto ang si Dr. Ginsburg, sabi niya. And I did not come here to chat with him. I came here for him to save my life. And if he's going to do that with that surgery, I have no problem working with him. O di na shut up ako. Di kaya tama yun? That's true. So sometimes, you know, um, doctors are only people. Um, meron din hong masungit, meron din hong ano, uh, meron din pong mahirap kausap, ganon. But in the end, magaling ka bang doctor? Are you an excellent surgeon? And my boss was the number one cancer surgeon, lung cancer surgeon, and I could say this with all certainty, in the entire world. So yun lang. But kuminsan, syempre, nakakatulong din naman yung mabait. <laughs> um, from Jubilin, I like it, Doc. Magaling kang mag-explain. Kung may clinic lang po kayo malapit sa SM Fairview, baka ayan po yung asawa ko kasi dapat monitor siya ng pool mo. Right now, nasa work, if siya nagpapacheck sa pool mo last Monday, need nilang mag-quarantine kasi may contractor na positive pala at nakausap ng mga engineers. Damay din siya kasi engineer po si daddy. No choice siya but to stay in the barracks. Need po naman na magpa-check up sa pulmo because of his BX. Ano po ito? Biopsy? Okay. Ma'am, thank you for the kind words again. There are many fabulous pulmos po in Quezon City. Just contact me if you want to uh, know their names. Lang Center is also excellent. And regarding po sa mga barracks, ito po si Mayor J. Um, dito po kami sa province and I know a lot of personally, a lot of contractors, a lot of businesses, a lot of architects, a lot of engineers. Mahirap, marami ho talaga. Our construction industry po, talagang people are working close together. Napaka-init sa Pilipinas. Parang hindi ko talagang, you know, at a certain point, baka matanggal mo talaga yung face shield mo or mahihimatay ka. And then, you know, mag-aakyat ho kayo ng, ano, ng, ng iron bar, uh, trusses, whatever. Manual labor talaga yan eh. So, magkakatabi-tabi ho, magkakat, no, hinihingal. I mean, those are the, ano ho talaga, for COVID spread. It's difficult. Marami po kaming maging kababayan ng mga construction workers na talaga pong nagkasakit. Um, naging positive. I, I really feel for them. Hanap buhay po nila yon. I feel for the construction industry po ng Pilipinas because yung dami po ng jobs na generate ng construction is ano eh, it's a multiplier po talaga for jobs. So naintindihan ko po si Secretary um, Dominguez and um, Secretary um, ng DTI when they say we have to resume our construction industry. Pero talaga po mahirap, 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 mahirap. Okay? I'm not here to tell you na tama, mali, or what. I am recognizing po the difficulty of the situation. At hindi po ako ang manghuhusga na tama o mali. Mahirap. Mahirap. From Brenda, good morning po. Masasakit po ang aking buto-buto, daliri sa akong balikat sa ngayon po. Last June, palabs ako na manuric acid ko, arthritis na pabayan. Ano po ang pwede kong inumin? Kagabi po, umuyinom ako ng Flanax. Ang sakit po ng sikmura ko, ang Losartan. Rosvastatin for two months, Losartan. Meds, 40 pa po ako. 40s ka pa lang, ang dami mo nang iniinom. Um, okay, let, let's tackle the problem one by one. And again, ma'am, general lang to ah, you still have to go to your doctor. Number one, arthritis, okay? Yung pag sumasakit na huwing buong katawan nyo, okay? Most likely arthritis. It's, you're kind of young for arthritis, 40s. Bata pa ko kayo. Have yourself checked. Um, there are other things po like chronic fatigue that might be causing that. I don't know. Have yourself checked. With regards po to taking Flanax, methanamic acids, and these are called NSAIDs, no? Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Maganda po ito for arthritis. A caution lang po. Too much of this po, they can erode the lining of the stomach and susuka po kayo ng dugo or what we call upper GI bleeding. 
it can happen po from too much flanax, too much methanamic acid. So take that with the supervision po of a doctor. Okay? Um, with regards po dun sa lahat ng iniinom nyo, you're taking an anti- um, an anti-cholesterol, um, yung statin drugs, okay laman po yun. Uh, yun, mga sakit na sigmura, patingin na ho kayo because again, notorious siya for GI bleeding. Um, losartan and robastatin, losartan is for blood pressure, robastatin is for, ano po, for, um, these are statin drugs. So, ang tanong ko sa'yo, what is your weight, Brenda? What is, what is your exercise level? What is your family history? Are your parents high blood? Do your parents, did your parents have heart disease? Are you still menstruating or not menstruating? Issue rin po yan. Um, so, and dami po, ano? So, before, so, eto lang, Reina, it's hard to give advices without knowing the family history, the personal history, the weight, lahat po yan. So, iniinom po ni ma'am, that's for high blood. The other one po is for cholesterol. Ngayon, kung talaga kung kailangan nyo yun, well, then you have to take it. Okay? From Camille. Thanks, Camille. Wow, ang ganda naman ang sinabi ni Camille. Best doctor ever. Um, yung BP po ni Sir Maynardo, 68 years old, medicating 150, 145 over 90, mataas ba? Sometimes 140 over 86 digital. Ang tanong ko, saan galing yung BP nyo? If your BP was 180 last month and you started taking medication, so they okay na si 145. Again, ano po, no? And then it depends din po. Do you have other medical conditions? Um, if you are diabetic, if you are hypertensive, ganun, uh, heart disease po, um, you might want to go, and it depends rin po eh, if you started really high, if I put you at 120, baka mahilo rin kayo eh. So sometimes mga 130, ganun, ang 130 over 90 po is already considered po high blood ngayon. Especially if you have other uh, factors like um, overweight, um, diabetic, heart disease, family history, poor diet. Medication na po talaga yung, kumbaga, you may be tempted to start medications at 135 over 90. Lalo na kung feeling hindi naman papayat yung tao. Okay? So, um, is 145 over, it depends on how you feel and what your other sockets are. From Jubilee, hanapin ang doktor na makagamot lalo na sa pedyo. Just like yung son ko, pag nagpunta kay Dr. Ong sa Philippine Children's, one click lang, magaling na ubo niya. Kaya kahit malayo sa traffic, go pa rin kami. Ma'am, totoo yan. There are people po na talagang dinadayo po ng doktor. Dinadayo talaga nila yung doktor nila. Um, because they really feel comfortable there. Yun po yun. And that's good. That's good po. Congratulations to Dr. Ong. From Arlene, thank you, Doctora sa sagot. Thank you, Arlene, also. From Brenda, sumasakit po ang ulo sa tuktok. Saan po kaya yun at hindi po ako nakakatulog, putul-putul po ang tulog ko. This is the reason why we can't answer the questions, okay? Number one, high blood ka ba? Did you check? Masakit ang ulo sa tuktok. Is this every day? Um, are you high blood? Uh, baka batok? Saan po sa tuktok? Um, is this a migraine? Na check nyo ba yung mata nyo? Those are those are the basic questions. Do you work outside? Ano ko ba ma mangingisda? I mean, people who are exposed to the sun is what I'm trying to say. It can be very sasakit din ho talaga yung ulo nyo. So may occupational history pa pala. I forgot to ask that, okay? Uh, and then mental history. Are you stressed? Are you depressed? Some of this comes out po sa headaches, okay? Um, so I already explored po eyes, um, basic headache, migraines, stress, job. Ano pa pa? Ano pa tinanong ni ma'am? Let's read it again. And natu ma mahirap matulog. Uh, they can be related. They can be not related. Um, bakit hindi ho kayo natutulog putol-putol? So the question is, naihi ba kayo? Diabetes. Lalaki ba kayo? Prostate. Ah, uh, putol-putol, galit ba kayo sa asawa nyo? Um, emotional. So, um, matabaho ba kayo? Big person with a thick neck, sleep up niya. May, baka naman ho, maingay lang sa bahay nyo. So, ang hirap! <laughs> Naku mo yun, Reyna? Yes, madami talagang factors dapat na 
Yeah. yeah, lahat yun. I can go through the differential diagnosis of nahirapan matulog kalahating auras na yun. But again, you know, explore nyo po yung mga issues na yun na sinabi ko. If your head is painful, try your eyes. But kung hindi ho eyes, pa-check din po kayo. From Lenny, Hi, Doc Ana. Pwede pong masakit sa tuhod. Ayaw ko pong uminom ng anti-inflammatory. Mom, some people use, ano, some people use um, apple cider vinegar. And then some people use uh, yung mga chondroitin. But again, no, wala naman ho talagang, ano. And unfortunately, arthritis is sakit po ng getting older. And lahat po tayo papunta lang naman doon. Opo. Ah, from Brenda. From 40 years old, umiinom na siya. Ngayon, 59 na. At ang parents ko po ay high blood at may sakit sa puso si father. See? Totoo yan. May mga taong 35 years old lang ho na high blood na gamot. Because of family history. From Maria Cecilia. Okay lang ho ba ang tempra 40? Um, Mom, I would say yes, but I would suggest you check for your pedia. Ayan. That's all, Dr. Sorry, over, over time na tayo, but mm -hmm. maganda, at least I was able to explain yung point trains kung bakit talaga. It's really hard to give personal advice. And kaya general lang tayo. So next week po, on Tuesday, Dr. Dodge Limhoko, Bato sa Bato. On Thursday, this is very nice. The topic is called measles. Measles, five things that moms ought to know. And this is by a community pediatrician, Doc Tina. Doc Tina po on measles. Okay? Bye, guys. Enjoy your lunch.